Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you won the war. We thank you, Lord, that we are victorious and greater who is living in us than he who is living in the world. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Whoa, if that one doesn't get your blood pumping, I don't know what else will. Hallelujah. Man, the hope that we have in Jesus. Uh, I'm excited about the days we're living in. Aren't you? I'm looking for the glory of God to be revealed in the earth. How's that going to happen? With you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I got my na official name tag on today, so everybody knows my name is Dan. I'm not from the tribe of Dan. How do I? Yeah, I, I may not. I may be a part of the tribe of Dan. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, this week, all week, I've been having the Lord speak to me about this, this one subject I'm going to talk about with us today. And it's the days of Noah. And, uh, and it's, just, it's just been percolating in my spirit as I go through, we go through this today. Uh, we are living in the days of Noah. It's the time. And I want to read, starting in uh, Matthew 24, verses 32 through 44. He begins with the parable of the fig tree. Now, learning the parable of the fig tree... When its branches have already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. And surely I say unto you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away but, but my word will by no means pass away. We can watch. How many of us know when spring is springing? It's kind of obvious, isn't it, when things are starting to pop out of the ground and, and things are beginning to grow and the weather begins to change. Except a couple of years ago when it was like March, we had boom, all kinds of snow. But there's, when the spring is springing, we know it. We know that we're in summer. But how many of you know that we're coming into fall? Now, is fall here? Is winter here yet? No, we know it's coming. Uh, to me, this time of year is uh, the best time of year. I love September, October, because it's just great. You don't have all the winds you have in the spring, and it's just really, really nice. So what he's saying here is, watch the fig tree. Who's the fig tree? Israel. Israel is always referred to as the fig tree. Watch Israel. Watch, see what's happening in Israel. And you will have an indication of where we are. Oh, shoot. So as we watch Israel, what time are we in? Many of us love President Trump. And we was hoping he would just change America. I'm still hoping it might happen. I don't know. We'll see. That's in God's hands. But I believe the number one, the number one Jesus God put President Trump. Huh? Number one reason. Number one reason. Yeah. I got my editor back here. <laughs> my editor in chief. <laughs> So I have dyslexia, so I'll screw words up all the time. So if you're coming because I'm, I, I speak perfectly, uh, you're in the wrong place. But, uh, but you look at, at Israel. Uh, number one reason why President Trump was placed in the White House is declare Jerusalem the capital of Israel. That's it. That has sealed everything. You can go back. Jonathan Kahn has a great, lays out... Uh, in 1867 began the process of restoration of Israel. Then 1917, these are jubilee years, 1917, 1967, and now 
another Jubilee 2017, on a Jubilee year, President Trump declares Jerusalem the capital. So we can see by the fig tree Israel that we are coming to a very critical time in history. Now, is it over tomorrow? No, I, I don't know yet. It's like, is winter here tomorrow? No, well, not quite yet, but I know it's coming. Then he goes on to say this in verse 36. But of that day, the hour no one knows, but even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So we don't, we don't put dates. All we know is the season. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also shall, uh, also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 40, Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the meal. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known that the hour the thief was coming, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect it. Jesus is laying out the season. There will be a season, and you will know the season. And when you see that season, Jesus also said, look up when you see all these things coming on the earth, because your redemption is drawing nigh. There's a coming day. The Lord is coming back for His church. There was a day that we can read in Noah, about Noah, that Jesus talked about Noah. It's in the days of Noah. You know, Joe, uh, Noah's great-grandfather was Enoch. Enoch walked with God, and he was no more. When he went on this walk with God, God says, well, you're closer to my house than yours. Let's just go to my house. He went to heaven. And so when Enoch prophesied several times from, of dreams that he had, and here's one of them from the book of Enoch. Now, the book of Enoch is not canon scripture, but if you look in historically, the, the, the Jewish people watched, they knew aware of the book of, uh, uh, book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, the book of Jubilee, even quoting. And if you go to the, uh, a quote in Joshua referring to the time when the, earth, or the sun stood still for 24 hours, and it says, as written in the book of Jasher. So these books are historical books. They're not canon of Scripture, but we can draw things from them. And so here in the book of Enoch, 54, 7 through 10, it says, in the day... The punishment of the Lord of spirits will come, and all the storehouses of water above the earth will come. These waters will join as male and female. All those who dwell on the earth will be destroyed. When the floods come, many will cry out and admit their sins, yet they shall die in the flood. So this was prophesied spoken out by Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah. Now let's look at Noah a little bit here. In Genesis 6-9 it says, This is the, genera the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. There's some specific there we don't want to overlook. Generations. What's his generations? His ancestry. Noah walked with God. Why is this, this something that we need to be aware of? As we go back and we, I don't want to get too deep into this, but if we study pre-flood, pre what was happening in pre-flood, 
You can read in Genesis 6, 6 1, <clears throat> where the angels came down, had their way with women, created a half, a half uh, breed angel humans. There was a, uh, a distortion of humanity. Why? You can go back to the beginning when the curse, God said that the seed of the woman will just crush the, the seed of the serpent. So it became all about a seed war to destroy the seed. So the enemy intervened into mankind, began to pervert mankind to destroy the seed so that seed would not come forth and crush his head. And the earth becomes so perverted, so perverted at that time. So that's why it's significant here, it says that Noah was perfect in his generations. His ancestry, the seed that he was carrying, was the perfect seed of mankind, not perverted. If you do any study on this, it's out there, like I do some, I'm studying this stuff and I'm reading. But when I run across, it says two, three years ago, on BBC, I don't know if it's still there, where they have genetically, through four species, it was like a, a rat, a chicken, a monkey, a cow. Now they're harvesting human blood from cows. Genetic alteration is rampant. Once they map the genetic genome, Pandora's box is open. Now our crops are being, are, are being manipulated. Corn is being manipulated. I talked with a farmer, a guy that sells seed out here. I was out with a friend, and we were talking with this other guy who sells seed, and this is back when they were trying to pass country of origin. And he says, that's not the only thing we need to be deal with. They've so altered the corn that cows have to be given high doses of penicillin because of what's happening. Their food source has been changed. How much of our food source has been changed? Well, that's a whole Pandora's box we can go down. But we're living in the times of Noah. They were genetically altering mankind because they wanted to destroy the seed. But Noah and his generations was pure, was perfect. Then in Genesis 7.1, then the Lord said to Noah, come into the, into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in, in this generation. Genesis 7, 4 through 6. For after seven days, I will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And I will destroy the face of the earth, all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. How many of you have ever read any about Greek mythology? Greek mythology has a lot with theology. It's, it's a mythology, myth, we, mythical. But the question is, is how much of it really was mythical and how much of it was true? The genetic alterations that were going on, half scimitars, half man, half woman, or uh, horse, <laughs> half man, half horse. <laughs> well, we're kind of getting that today, aren't we? Yeah, so, so this the genetic alterations that were going on. Also, the... Uh, the gods, Zeus, uh, the demigods, Hercules, half, half God, half human. All these things were going on before Je Noah. And God says, it's over. Either uh, If I don't destroy it now, there will be no hope for mankind. So he destroyed it all. And so after seven days, he, he wiped it out. I read that one four and six, didn't I? Okay, next one. Genesis 7, 13 through 16. On the very day that Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah and Noah's wife and their three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. 
They and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth after its kind, every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, all, and all flesh in which breathed the breath of life. So those that entered, male and female, of all the flesh, when in, as God had commanded him, the Lord shut the door. Now there's a lot more to this. I'm just pulling out some of these scriptures. You can go, go read this on your, your own. But I underlined that, underlined that part there. The Lord shut the door. There was no way man could shut the door. That's what the Lord has been dealing with me all week. And we'll get into that in a moment. Methuselah died the year of the flood. Seven days is the number of mourning. God always has a witness in the earth. Methuselah, Noah's grandfather, and Noah witnessed to the earth for 100 years. While they were building the ark, there was two of them proclaiming the truth. God always has a witness. Always. Enoch even foretold, as we read earlier, a thousand years before that this flood was coming. So the world knew it. The world at that time knew it. How big the world was, we have no concept of what that was. Many think if you take the globe and you put all the pieces together, like Africa, and it all fits, could be one continent. and was all fractured during the, during the flood. Because it says the fountains of the deep opened, there was great movement on the face of the earth. The world was reshaped. So if it was one continent at that time, they had access to everybody. And everybody probably come from all over the world to see these kooks building this big boat. And it never flooded before. And it was high and dry. Like if you're building it down on the coast, that would be one thing. But if you're building it up on Mount Hood, that's kind of a whole nother reason, isn't it? These are kooks. So God is always, always, remember this, God is always redemptive. His focus is to save man. To save mankind. That's why this happened, is to save you. Because if Noah would not have done that, we, would have been, we wouldn't be here today. But because of Noah's obedience, he followed God and saved us. So here's something that's interesting as we go through this. The names of the gener generations from Adam to Noah. So the first one is Adam, means man. Second one, Seth, means appointed. Enosh, means mortal. Kenya, Kenya or Kenya, sorrow. Mahalel is the, the blessed God. Jared shall come down. Enoch, teaching. Methuselah, his death shall bring. What did his death bring? The flood. Uh, Emelech, de despairing. And Noah, comfort or rest. So these are the, the names of, in Hebrew, everybody's name means something. So what's the story? And this was brought out by Chuck Missler. He found this several years ago. The next, let's read this sentence. The next, okay. For man was appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching. 
His death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest. God will come down. Who is, who, who is God that come down? Jesus. So before the flood, God had a plan for us. The flood had to come for us. That we could be saved at this time. That we could enter into the presence of God and have the Holy Spirit and have what we have. God had to save mankind because it was a spiritual war that was waging against the seed. And if the devil won, Jesus could not come because he come from the seed of the woman. The seed of the woman and God. This is from the beginning. First Timothy 2, 3 through 7. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of the God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved. What is it? All men. God does not want to lose a one of us. God did not want to lose those people before. Back in Noah's time. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testi- uh, testified in due time. Romans eleven twenty five through 26 For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness is in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written. There's a time coming. That all of Israel will be saved. There's a lot of coming to Messiah right now. But there's coming a point. All Israel will be saved. When? The fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Who's the Gentiles? Us. What's the fig tree saying? What's the season saying? Where are we? Where are we? I'm going to go back and I want to focus. And the Lord shut him in. This is what the Lord's been doing with me all week. The door was open seven days. Anyone could have entered the ark if they would have believed the preaching of Noah and Methuselah. For seven days, they were on the ark, waiting, and only God could shut the door. And when God shut the door, it was over. It was over. You're too late. As, as Enoch said, and many cried out, repenting, but it was too late. The ark was, was and is open to us today. Our ark today is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is open to every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. He's open. Come. Come. Today is the day of salvation because there's no guarantee of tomorrow. Once the rapture happens, the catching away, her podso, Many say, oh, there's no such thing as rapture in the Bible. Well, read, read Latin. Latin is rapture, which means catching away. When we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, it's over. The age of the Gentiles, the church age, the age of grace is over. Then God's attention will move from the church to Israel. 
And at that time it says all Israel will be saved because they will know their Messiah. Jesus. And they will wage many battles. They will fight and stand up against the Antichrist. There will many die. But we don't have to go through that. We don't have to go through the destruction that's coming on the earth. Because the ark is open to us right now today. The ark is the Holy Spirit. For seven days, God kept the ark open. And when the day of mourning was over, the eighth day, eighth day is the day of new beginnings. The door went shut. How many people today, oh, I've got time. I've even heard people say, well, I'll, I'll go into, I'll go in uh, to the, after the rapture, so I'll go in and I'll get saved. You don't know what all hell is going to break loose on the earth because the devil knows he's winning. He's so deceived, he believes that he is going to win. And that's where we are today. We're seeing the escalation of evil all around this world. People that are being deceived right and left. People you would never think would think the way they think. Because a mass delusion is coming on the populace. Not just on, but the whole world. So it, that tells me the fig tree is getting close to ripe. Am I afraid? No. No, I'm not afraid. Because I know where I'm going. But what I'm concerned about is the people I love, the people I know that have not made that decision yet. And those who have fallen away or gone off and done their own things. The Lord wants to shut you in today. And so as we enter into a time of worship, the time of introspection in each one of us if you're right with god praise the lord it's time to worship and be excited for what god is doing and the miracle signs and wonders we're going to see the glory of god is going to be revealed in the earth why is the glory of god going to be revealed but so that none would be lost god's heart because if god didn't want to win the world we'll just shut her down but no, this is the time for the manifestation of the glory to God to be revealed in His church. This is our hour. This is our time. This is why we are alive right now. God could have had us be born at any time throughout history. We could have been born in the dark ages. We could have been born back during the plagues uh, under, under Mao Zedong or Genghis Khan or who knows where we could have lived. But God chose for us to live right now in this hour. And the hope, the hope for the world is in you and I. And I've said this before, the hope for America is the church. But God is waiting for the church. Wake up! It's not time to play church, it's time to be the church! And to walk in the victory and the confidence that we have what they didn't have before the flood, that Noah didn't even have. We have what before Jesus come, what the, the early Jews knew. Uh, they, had, they followed God. They followed the rituals. Moses and all that, they, walk, they walked in those things. But they didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. We do. So there is no reason for us to be in despair. There's no reason for us to be discouraged. Because I know where I'm going. I know where you're going. Our mission is to, 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 is to reach as many people as we can and share the gospel with people. The door is open, and people need to know. The door is open now. It may not be open tomorrow. And we don't know what's going to come on the earth. If we're already seeing things now coming upon the earth, we have no concept of what's going to happen after we're out of here. Why? 
Because when we go up to meet the Lord in the air, the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, is no longer on the earth. Where does the Holy Spirit dwell? Right here. He habitates in us. So when the church goes up, the restrainer is gone. And the people, and we know that there's uh, uh, 144,000 of the 12, uh, 12 tribes of Israel. They get saved. They're the witness. We know the three witnesses will come down. Different, God's going to still be moving. But they're not the church. The church age will be over when the rapture takes place. Because we go to meet the Lord in the air, and it's the ancient Jewish wedding ceremony. We are in a time of waiting, consecration, waiting for our bridegroom to come back and get us and take us home. And in tradition, when the Father said, it's ready, the Son would take his groomsmen and come back. And it was generally around midnight. They would blow the trumpet. We can see the, the, ten, the ten virgins. Five are wise, five are foolish. The five are wise. Oh, our, our bridegroom comes. Yeah, we need oil, we need oil. What's oil? Holy Spirit. They let their oil run out. So they had to go out and buy. When they come back, it's too late. The door was shut. Because they went up. The groomsman comes in. They, the bridegroom don't come all the way back. They pick her up and carry her back to him. Then they pick him up and carry them, both of them, back to the hoopah, the place of consummation. What's that a picture of? The rapture of the church. We're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. People say, do you believe in the rapture? I believe in Thessalonians. Thessalonians so it's chapter 3. Talks about being caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we ever be with the Lord. On earth, that's the day the door goes shut. Yeah? Yeah, there's... You will, you will be like the saints of old. If you accept God, you will go through hell on earth, whatever happens. People say, well, we'll live through that. I'm going to tell you, you study the disasters that are coming on the earth, there will only probably be one-third of the world's population will be left. So you, a person that goes into that will probably die. Hopefully, they've invited God into their life. And so they will be <clears throat> in heaven, but they won't be the bride of Christ. Now is the time to be the bride of Christ. Now is the time to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now is the time to accept Him as your bridegroom. Now is the time to say, yes, yes, Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Well, I've gone to church my whole life. I've led people to the Lord that have been in church their whole life that never invited Jesus into their heart. It's like marrying somebody and you never get them in your heart. So what do you have? You have a companionship. You just live in the same house. You're good friends. But they're not in your heart. Shirley got into my heart. For some reason, I just can't get her out. <laughs> I invited Jesus into my heart. I just didn't want to know about God. I just wanted to want to hear the stories about God. I wanted Jesus to come in to my heart. He's there. I can't get rid of him. I can't get rid of him. So today, as we go into worship, if you have not invited Jesus into your heart, 
today is the day. I don't care if you've been in church your whole life. If you have not invited Jesus into your heart and say, Lord, come into my heart and to be my Savior, I give you everything I am. Come in, Holy Spirit, and he will come in and make his abode in you. And you will have an encounter that's beyond this world. Is it easy? No. Life's not easy. But I thank God that I'm walking with the Lord. It's like this week, this message, it's like all week long, the door was open seven days. God's grace, seven days. I'll give him seven days. Everything's ready to go, seven days. We could say right now, everything's ready to go, but God's saying seven days, and the door will go shut. And so those that are watching on on YouTube as we go into worship, I ask you to invite Jesus into your heart today. Invite him into your heart. Because he loves you. Wherever you are in this world watching today, this is your day of salvation. And if you've been in church your whole life, that's great. But if you haven't invited Jesus into your heart, You need him in your heart. Today is the day of salvation. And so we go into worship here. We'll be over here. If you want some prayer, we want to pray with you. And those of you that are watching, if if you would just jot a note and that you've accepted the Lord, that would be great. And with your name, we'll pray for you. We will pray for you. Get plugged in somewhere. You need to be plugged in somewhere. It's the the church is meant to be a posse. We're not lone rangers. We need each other. When we come together, there's a synergy. There's a dynamic that happens in the Holy Spirit, in the presence of the Holy Spirit that brings life, that brings excitement, that brings joy. And when one's down, the other picks us up. And when the other one's down, we pick each other up and we encourage one another and be strong together. We're, there's, there's a synergy dynamic when we come together with the heart of God and the focus of the Holy Spirit to bring transformation into our lives and into the world. So today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Now is God saying to me there's seven more days? I don't know. Does that mean seven months? I don't know. Seven weeks? I don't know. Seven years? I don't know. But I know, I know beyond a shadow of of a doubt The hour we're living in, the fig tree is ready for harvest. Because the last thing that had to happen is Jerusalem declared the capital. And Jewish, Messianic Jewish people said also what is happening is America could never be the savior of of Israel. God has to be. So America had to, to come down. Where are we? Where are we? Amen? Amen. God knows what he's doing. Amen. Let's worship, Dan.